the, the opening that has been chosen for me by my producer, Pastor I.J. Aquera, is a lengthy one. Okay. So I'm going to take it. I wait for you to give answers. Then we'll continue. It's a page long entry. Okay. And I'm going to take it. It comes from a guy, Alex Dianga. It doesn't seem to be writing from Nigeria. It says, Dear Seven of God, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I've seen a short clip posted on WhatsApp where you, or in which you address the subject of the Holy Communion. It's a very short clip that may have been extracted from a longer message. That clip may not give the entire, entire context of what you are trying to convey. However, from the clip alone, one gets the picture that you are saying, that what you are saying does not represent the truth about the Holy Communion. Holy Communion and Passover are two different things. Holy Communion was done during Passover because Christ was uh, crucified, before Christ was crucified, and Christ commanded us to continue doing it in his remembrance. We are not to observe the Passover, but to take the Holy Communion. The word communion simply means fellowship. The disciples had a holy, a holy fellowship of eating together as they remember the Lord's um, death. It's also called Eucharist in Latin. Do you agree to that point? No, I think he's quoting the Bible out of context. First of all, your submissions are not scriptural because there's no such word as Holy Communion in the Bible. It does not exist anywhere. What we have in the Bible is the Passover, which was a feast of the Jews, which Moses gave to the Jews as his way of communicating to them of what Christ was going to do in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is why when Jesus came in the book of Luke, he did one with them and he told them, I will no more eat this with you guys, this, until that day in my father's kingdom. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he ate it with them by way of teaching for 40 days. Now the disciples never practiced holy communion. What you have there is the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread is what we call love feast. And then they also had supper. The Lord's supper is not the Passover. And it's not the communion. The Lord's supper is dinner. They ate dinner. They had, a, uh, they had a culture of coming together to eat dinner or to have a love feast. But the Passover ended in the book of Luke. When Brother Paul was talking about it in the book of Corinth, he was talking to the Corinthian church as carnal men in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 because the Bible is contextual. He said, I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal because there are divisions among you. So based on that, he began to talk to them concerning, you know, love and forgiveness and walking in love. And then he said to them, Christ, our Passover. So our Passover is no more a feast. Our Passover is a present. His name is Christ Jesus. However, I will help you because I did an extensive two-hour teaching on that. And we don't have time to get into all the technicalities of the exegesis on that. So I recommend for you discerning the lost body, part one and two, to give you a comprehensive picture. But it was not an endorsement because the Holy Communion is not in the New Testament. It's not in the Bible. It was rebranded or it was coined, coined by, you know, by, I don't want to call names now, for Christian practice. But it is not a scriptural teaching. However, today, our communion with Christ is spiritual. When we receive his word, we are eating his body and we are drinking his blood through the teaching of his word. That's why Jesus said, the words that I now speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Papa, I just do justice to Alex Dianga by taking the closing comments that he makes. Some, some believe that the bread and wine actually become Christ's body, physical body and blood. It's not possible. Okay. Others believe that the bread and wine remain unchanged, but that Christ is spiritually and uniquely present with the bread and wine. Jesus lives on the inside of the believer, not in bread and wine. Still, others believe that the bread and wine symbolize Christ's body and blood. Well, we don't work with symbols. We work with the reality. Why do you need symbols when the real deal is here? But Papa, I'm wondering what you say to him in his closing um, comments. He took a shot. says, for these very reasons, I humbly submit that your comments on the Holy Communion on that clip may mislead the flock of Jesus. As such, I request humbly that you correct that impression. Well, the, the, the short clips that are always given for genuine and sincere and serious people always have reference. It's always put there. It is an excerpt from and the details are given and how to order for the complete message is also given there. So people that are serious and really want to learn will always call our office and get the complete notes and go through the entire teaching. And that's the way to go. Papa, let's go to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates where Mbuha.